as we can kind of take a deep breath and center our hearts and our minds and our bodies and our spirits to be more fully present in this time of worship. And now as you are able and as it is comfortable for you, I invite you to stand for our call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you to turn as you can and face the baptismal font. And certainly I always encourage and welcome you to, you know, dip your finger in and make the sign of the cross. Um, as a reminder and a remembrance of your baptism every Sunday, but especially on this Sunday. Um, it's good to feel that physical reminder. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, O living one, for you have created all, and you water the earth abundantly. Oceans and aquifers praise you, rivers and streams bless you. All life is sustained by you, our source. We praise you for Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who frees us from sin and raises us up to new life. Here at this font, we touch the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing through the city of God. Here death is washed away forever. Here we are grafted into the tree of life with leaves for the healing of the world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this congregation, into this community, and throughout all creation. Cleanse us from our fears and drown our divisions. Grant that all may drink of your mercy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And in the joy of this gift of baptism, we sing our gathering song, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Alleluia.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Also with you. We sing our hymn of praise. This is the feast. resurrection. You loved us so completely that you willingly submitted to a human death, and by your sacrifice you destroyed death forever. Give us new life every day, that we might proclaim the good news of your salvation to all the world. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated for the readings. Today's reading is from Psalm 118. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horn <coughs> of the altar. Word of God, word of light. Thanks
according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you there. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone. They were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. This is how Mark started his gospel way back in chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the good news. And then Mark just dives right on into the action. No baby, no angels, no shepherds. We go straight to John the Baptist, and then Jesus' baptism and temptation, and we are just off and running. And since then, we have followed Jesus with his disciples to see where this story of good news would lead, to learn how it would end. We're not introduced to these women from today's gospel, in Mark's gospel, until Good Friday. That's when we first see them. They've not been mentioned before, chapter 15. But it turns out that they too have been following Jesus, that they have been with him from the beginning in Galilee, that they and many other women had come up with Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem. They have been there since the beginning. And now, this morning, it would seem that they have reached the bitter end of the story as we join them en route to the tomb. All of the love and the hope and the joy they have felt in Jesus, the inclusion that he offered to them, the sense of change and potential and transformation that they felt in his presence, all of that was crucified on the cross with Jesus on Friday. And they stayed at the cross until the tragic conclusion of this story. They watched from a distance as Jesus died. And then they watched as Joseph of Arimathea took the body down and wrapped it hastily in a linen cloth that he had purchased and placed Jesus in the tomb and rolled a stone against the door. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid, Mark tells us. And there, into that tomb, sealed up with Jesus, went all of their hopes and their dreams for what could be and what might have been, all of the love that they held for him. And there was nothing that they could do. Because now, the Sabbath is approaching, and the story has come to its end. And so they come to the tomb on this morning to add a kind of epilogue to this sad tale. To tie up the loose ends, they come to the tomb prepared to find it locked by this stone, which was very large, Mark tells us. 
too heavy for them to move. And they have come weighed down with spices and with their grief to anoint the body if somehow they can get someone to roll away the stone. We all know or have lived in our own stories that came to an unexpected end too soon. This week, maybe you saw this in the news, I read the story of a baby that died in someone's in-home daycare. And, and those are all the details we know. But my heart breaks for that family and for the caregiver, who all of whom I can only imagine are filled with grief and questions and if onlys and what ifs. This child's story ended too soon. In the national news, we woke up one morning this week to the still unfolding story of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing and knowing and thankful for the fact that it, it might have been so much worse if, they had, if it hadn't been in the middle of the night, if they hadn't stopped the traffic, and yet knowing that there are families waking up on this Easter morning without their loved ones who are still missing, last I heard. This week for me was filled with laments from colleagues telling stories of the spouse who suddenly got fired out of the blue car accidents in which thankfully no one was hurt, but you know, all of the aggravation and the trauma of that, the money that will have to go out, the health woes of COVID and other sicknesses interrupting Holy Week. And we too all come into this place on Easter morning. We follow the women to the tomb and we carry our own burdens. Like them, we bring our anxieties about the future, our worries about the stones that are blocking our path forward, our sorrow about our own loved ones who will not be joining us at the table today due to distance or to death, our own hopes and dreams that seem dead or are dying, the stories in our lives that have come to their conclusion too soon, or which have not ended as we would have hoped. But this story from Mark's Gospel that seems like it has come to an end comes with this unpredictable surprise twist, doesn't it? The women are coming to the tomb thinking that they will find this immovably heavy stone, but already the stone has been rolled back from the entrance. And every time we read these stories, I think, God bless you, brave women, because if I came to a tomb with a stone that I thought was going to be there, not there, I'm not sure I would go in, right? But they enter the tomb, and they don't find there what they're expecting either. They think they will find Jesus' lifeless body. And instead, surprise, there is this young man in a white robe, who we can assume that's probably, you know, code for an angel, a heavenly messenger. And they are alarmed, Mark says. Of course they're alarmed. <laughs> and much to their surprise, he speaks to them. Do not be alarmed. Well, duh, do you like, really? You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. There's the place they laid him. Just like that, the story changes, right? The unbelievable has happened. Jesus is not in the tomb. And according to this messenger, Jesus has been raised from the dead. They look for themselves and see that the tomb is empty. But there's a little bit more to what the messenger had to say to them, right? He sends them on a mission. Go tell his disciples and Peter, who probably, you know, if you remember the events of Good Friday, denied Jesus three times, and is probably feeling pretty bad about himself right now. He may need a little extra consolation. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him, just as he told you. And 
All they can do is flee from the tomb, running in terror and amazement. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The end. That's where scholars think that this, this verse, verse 8, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They think that's the original, final ending of Mark's gospel. If you've ever looked at your Bible at home or you open up a Bible app on your phone, you would see that there were people in the past who weren't comfortable with that ending. My Bible has an intermediate ending, which is like two more verses. And then the long ending of Mark, which is like a paragraph. Because somebody had to fill in the blanks. Because how, what kind of an ending is this? For a gospel, for this good news. There is no Jesus, just the messenger. And the women run away and they say nothing to anyone. This is not a fitting conclusion to the story instead of an ending that feels satisfying, we get a cliffhanger, right? But I think this is brilliant. Because that introduction way back in Mark 1 wasn't just the beginning of this book. It's not just the introduction to the first chapter. The whole gospel of Mark is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. It's not a self-contained tale. It goes beyond the pages of this story. And we who are the readers have been in it from the beginning to what seems like the end. We have been watching and learning and hoping and grieving and running away in terror with these women. And now, you know, it seems that these women who have been so faithful when everybody else ran away, even they have failed Jesus. They stayed at the cross till he drew his last breath. They stayed long enough to see where the tomb was. They got up early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen. But when they see the young man and know Jesus, they run away and say nothing to anyone. There, Mark puts the ball in our court. What are you going to do with this story? If this gospel is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, are we going to let this be the ending? Or will we join in the story and take up this mission given to the women to carry the story into the future? Trusting that we will meet Jesus where we go so that this is not the end, but more like to be continued. Now, of course, I want to give the women credit. Obviously, someone said something to somebody. They didn't just run away forever. They must have told the disciples at some point, or we wouldn't all be here today. But wow, what a great way to bring this story to that cliffhanger ending and draw us in and send us out so that we join the story all these generations later. I bet most of us, like the women at the tomb, have not seen the physically resurrected Christ. But we have had messengers along the way too saying, he is not here, he has been raised. Coming to us in those moments when it seemed like our story was coming to an end, when all that was left for us was the grieving at the tomb of our life's hopes and dreams. It is in those times that we encounter witnesses who have shared the good news with us who have told us of his life and death and resurrection, of his love and mercy and forgiveness and healing and the ways that they have experienced the risen Jesus in their own lives. The empty tomb we find this morning reminds us that the story that began back in chapter 1, verse 1, isn't over. And Jesus the story goes on. 
In Jesus, the powers of this world that are so bent on violence and hostility and revenge and suffering and destruction are defeated. In Jesus, healing and hope still rise in the face of finality. In Jesus, death does not have the final word. Because Jesus lives, we shall live also. We get a new life in this life. And so we are sent even in our own terror and confusion and amazement to carry the story of the good news of what God has done for all of creation in raising Jesus from the dead. We go not just to speak words of good news, but to be good news, to live it out in acts of healing and justice and generosity and mercy and forgiveness and love. Because we are the ones in which Christ's story continues. The story doesn't end here. It lives on in each of us. And so we go trusting that we will meet Jesus as we go. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen.
Together with the whole church, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Risen God, free us from our fear, and we might <coughs> boldly proclaim the good news of all that you have done for us. God of new life, hear our prayer. Whether in seasonal climates or in climates where the cycles of change are more subtle, we will always see signs of renewal and growth. May each new sprout or newborn life form be a joyful proclamation of the resurrection. God of new life, hear our prayer. As you call upon women who follow Jesus to proclaim the resurrection, continue to raise up leaders from among marginalized communities that they might open our eyes to new and effective solutions to the world's challenges. God of new life, hear our prayer. You promise us eternal life where there will be no more sickness or grief. Until that time, send your healing strength to all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they might be comforted in their pain, especially Ethel, Richard, Burr, Krista, Jim, Lois, Tim, Laura, the family of Gloria, and those who name silently or aloud. God of new life, hear our prayer. People around the world are celebrating this holiest of days, the resounding declaration of what makes us Christians. Unite the whole church in every nation that all might work together toward your reign of justice for all people. God of new life, hear our prayer. Here other intercessions may be offered. With gratitude, we remember all whose Easter faith has inspired us in our own walk with you. May we rejoice now in their memory and with them eternally in the world to come. God of new life, hear our prayer. We place in your arms all for whom we pray out loud or in our hearts, confident in your mercy and grace, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer ourselves, our time, and our resources to you, that you would use them to transform our world for the good of all people and all creation. Accept these gifts as a sign of our faithfulness to you and our commitment to the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also you'll be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Please come to the feast for all is now ready. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
announcements are on the back of your bulletin. Uh, today is the last Sunday of the month, and so it is the day we remind you and encourage you um, that it is Coins in Your Pocket Sunday. Um, you can always leave your money in that basket if you want to, but this is the day we remind you. Um, that is money that we gather in and then we give out to community organizations like Hope Center and Tabitha uh, Lutheran Church, which is in Milwaukee, um, Hebron House, a couple other places, um, so that they can do the good work that they do in our community and that's one of the ways that we support them. And so um, we appreciate when you give to that and so do the people around us. We also have fellowship and some cute goodies. Um, come and see the really fancy sugar cookies um, that Doris brought. I also call your attention to the fact that I will be on vacation starting Wednesday and be back the following Tuesday. Like I'm returning to Wisconsin that Tuesday, so I'll be back the following Wednesday to work. Um, pastor Mara Hooper has agreed to be the emergency pastor if you need something. Um, and so her number is there, and I would encourage you to you know, take a picture on your phone if you don't want to take the whole thing with you, just in case. Um, and she will be preaching on Sunday next week as well. There's an updated food pantry wish list, because tomorrow is April 1st, no fooling. Um, and so if you are able to give in that way, um, that's part of how we live out our faith is by our service and our generosity to those around us. So if you're able to do that, we invite you to do that. Anything else I need to share? All right, then I invite you to stand for the blessing. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. And we sing our sending song, Because He Lives, which is on your bulletin insert. <laughs>
is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.